So you would like to know the move keyword in Rust and lucky you, you found this video. Now in this video, we're going to explicitly look at some examples on when to use this move keyword in Rust and why you should actually use it. So what is even the purpose of the move keyword in Rust? First of all, the whole purpose of the move keyword in Rust is basically that it takes ownership of all the variables used in the closure. And you often see this move keyword in, for instance, threads or basically in closures. Now, let's do an explicit example here. So first off, we're going to take a deeper, closer look at how you can even enforce the developer to use this move keyword. So for that, we simply define a vector here. Now, I will just put in the values 1, 2, 3, just as an example. And now we are going to define a function which takes in a closure. Now for that, we're going to make use of some generics. I'm not going to explain what even the generic F is here or what even generics is, but it's pretty easy to understand. So first off, we're going to define F as an fn once function. That basically means that this closure that we define here as an argument for this function can only be called once and not multiple times. Now in this function, we are simply calling the closure we pass in as an argument to our closure function. Now let's quickly rename this function because it can be like really confusing. Let's just call it c, because why not? This is just an example. Now what we can do in our main function is, like we are used to do, just push an element to our vector. However, if we now want to call this function and use basically a closure, this is how you define a closure and here basically there comes the arguments for this closure function. However, we are going to simply call it and then mutate our vector by simply pushing 5. Now, this works right here. The reason is because we do not explicitly define the lifetime for our C function. I will quickly show you what this even means. So we are running the main function, then we are defining a vector, then we are calling a function which is named C, and then in this C function we are directly calling the F closure, which is then just pushing the 5 into our vector and then we push the 4 in our vector. Now this works perfectly and there is no real reference issue or ownership issue. However, how can we mark this C function so that the closure basically lives until the main program or the main application was closed or terminated? We can do this by simply adding a plus and then the static lifetime modifier. Now this basically means now that we want this closure that it lives until the main application was terminated. If we save this now, we see that we get the typical move error. So that error basically means that the closure may outlive the current function, but it borrows blah blah blah. So what this means is that we call the main function, we create a mutatable vector, then we call the C function. And in this C function, we call the F function. However, we also define that this specific closure we use as an argument here will live until the main application is terminated. Without this static lifetime modifier, this closure would have lived just until here basically. So we could just use the vector even after executing this closure. However, with this static lifetime modifier, we now say, okay, this typical closure here will live until the end, basically. And that's why we cannot push the 4 into our mutatable vector. Now, how are we going to fix this issue is pretty simple. We just apply the move keyword. The move keyword takes ownership of all the variables used inside of the closure. What that means is basically that we cannot make use of the mutatable vector after this closure. So this does not work anymore. So basically the move keyword simply takes ownership of all the variables used inside of a closure. So the closure basically now owns the V, so the mutatable vector in this case. Okay, just to reiterate what we did here. We defined a main function, we defined a mutatable vector, then we defined a function called C, 
and this C function wants an argument which is generic and just is the fn once operator, which is basically saying that this closure can only be called once throughout the whole lifetime. And then we also say that this specific closure is static, which basically means that it will live till the main application was terminated. In this function c, we simply call f, and then we basically define the closure right here. In this closure, we basically push 5 to our mutatable vector. However, we also use the move keyword because now we say, okay, please take care of the ownership of the vector here. Now you will see this typically in threads, for instance. However, another example can be seen in Leptos. So let's take a quicker look at Leptos. So this is the Leptos example here. Now this can typically occur when you try to develop like a web application in Leptos itself. And you often use the, the move keyword just to move the references or the variables used inside of a closure into basically the ownership of this closure. So what do we have here? We simply have a window document and body, nothing really special here. Then we create an element P and then we just create a button. Now we actually want to, for instance, declare a click event listener into the window itself. Now, how are we going to accomplish this? Pretty simple. We just use the window event listener untyped. Now, this is just an example, so I don't recommend using this function. However, this is just an example, so we're just explicitly showing the usage here of the move keyword in Rust. So what we do is use the click event as an event type and then we use the callback. Now, this is how we basically define an argument in Rust, which is not used in a closure or in any function. And now in this event listener, we now say set inner HTML of our P tag. And we just say hello world. Now, if we save this, we get a typical error, which is basically the error we have seen before, which is this move error. Now, how we can solve this is basically saying move. And now we basically get another error that obviously this P cannot be used because the closure is now owning this P. So how we can fix this is simply by wrapping this append child functionality below this creation of the P element. So if we save this, everything works. But why did we actually use now the move keyword? It's pretty typical that all the event listeners on the window, obviously you can cancel them and so on and so forth, but it's pretty typical that this event listener will live until the main application was terminated or until basically the web application was closed. Now, obviously this P element can change throughout the whole lifetime. And that's why we say that this closure in the event listener now owns the reference of the P element. So it basically owns the variable P. And that's why we cannot like use it after this specific event listener. Because like obviously if we, for instance, remove the P element or drop the P element, this event listener basically errors out because P is not defined anymore. And the Rust compiler is really smart here and just tells us, okay, please use the move keyword because obviously the event listener can live really till the end of the application. And that was basically it on what the move keyword is and how you can use it in Rust. I hope this video was kind of beneficial for you and now you understand basically the move keyword in Rust. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see each other next time.